So what's going on, Miracle? So we've had rain for the past four-ish days on and off. But today we've had it for a solid like five hours and it's been falling pretty steady and the wind started blowing a little bit so all that nice gushy soil was letting go of tree roots and so trees have started falling. So apparently somewhere a tree fell and went over the power line so now we have no power. Let's see if I can see you righteous. Him is black. The man in black. No, I can't see him. <laughs> So here's our mantle up here. So I'm always prepared with uh, oil lamps and candles because the candles are a whole lot easier to carry around with us going from place to place. But we were lighting the, uh, there's two more lamps up there, and they don't work. So, that is definitely something we're going to work on tomorrow. Is making sure all the oil lamps have oil and uh, work for us, just in case. We've been playing hide and seek with the dog in the dark. And just a fun game with the kids. Well, we've already planted some of our little uh, plants in our toilet paper holders, and that's what you see over there on the right. But right here in the middle, uh, we've got some flowers we're fixing to plant, and I just wanted to show you how easy it was to uh, transplant from the toilet paper holders. See that root ball on the bottom of that? So all we're going to do is go stick that in the dirt. Hey neighbors, we're out here on this lovely rainy day. Out here we're going to start cleaning up the back end of our homestead and start cleaning it up and getting ready for all of our spring crops that are about to come in, our early summer crops. So we're about to harvest our wheat here in the next month and harvest hay, bring it in and put it in the barn for this winter's feeding. So we're going to start cleaning up back here and making it look better and more organized for all the food that we're about to harvest for our critters. So what are the barrels for? So the barrels are for the wheat that we grow ourselves in front of the house and we buy a little bit of it from our neighbors just because we can't necessarily grow all that we need we've got cows, horses, and goats. We can grow enough for probably our goats and some of our cows, but the horse seed has to have some and all the other cows have to have some. So we have to barter for some of our wheat, but not all of it. But that's what the barrels are for. Throughout the winter, we're feeding wheat out of these barrels and they just get unorganized and it gets a little messy out here because we're just out here trying to get our chores done and getting feed and moving the barrels as they get empty and just getting them out of the way so we can do other things. So they get that unorganized in the winter time. But we need to come out here, we gotta cut up all that wood and put it in the dry so it can be drying for this winter. And then we need to get all the barrels back organized, make sure they all have lids and lid older thing in my diggers. Rings. Rings. <laughs> <laughs> rings. Guys. There's They're the rings. Up, they hang up on the side <laughs> of the wall so we don't lose them. They're a very, very important part of the process. So like I said, we're going to start harvesting soon, so we need nice dry places to put all of this feed, the hay, and the wheat. So that's what this area is for, and then of course behind it is the hay barn. So we got to get the wood cleaned up on the side so it's easily, easily accessible for our hay trailers as we bring them in and out when we start harvesting hay. We've got a lot to do back here to get ready for all the harvesting that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. It's always better to be prepared ahead of time than having to do all the cleanup and all the harvesting and all the putting up of the food all on the same day. That could be very, very stressful. <laughs> so, here we go. Well, we're starting to make some progress. I'm glad you can't smell it because we did find some rotten feed in one of them barrels that we didn't know was there. So we got that all cleaned out and the barrel washed out. He's taking these lids off these new barrels. They've been washed, but they're still damp on the inside. So we're going to turn them upside down, let them drain. 
Well, major improvement. Got all the barrels straightened up, all the junk cleaned off. Now we gotta clean up inside this area. And we're gonna split the wood this weekend. So that whole mess will be cleaned up for the summertime. But there's nothing worse than cutting or splitting wood in the summer. That's when all the uh, ants are gonna bite you. So I'd say that's a big improvement. So this is the next day and the wood pile that I was showing you and dad's home today so uh, he's always the leader of these big projects so he's getting his wood stack. This will be the last wood we stack for the summer. We're just getting it up and under the shed where it's supposed to be. We're trying not to get bit by ants and uh, stored for next winter. But it's already looking better out there. Look at these nice stacks. So we got her done all the way to the ceiling. And the wood pile's gone, all except that big one. We're gonna have to move with the loader. We're gonna clean up the uh, wood splitter and get it covered up for the summer. But boy, that made a big difference. Okay, so now we're going to give you a little demonstration of how to pull the slips off. And Joey's out here to help me. And uh, what he's going to do is he's going to put one hand on the potato itself that's in the ground. And then with the other hand, he's going to pull the little slips off the potato. You could pull the whole potato up if you thought you had enough slips. But if you leave that potato in there... It's just going to keep growing slips all season. So, you know, you could have animal damage. See, right there is the potato. You could have animal damage. Anything could happen. And this way, um, you have reserve potatoes coming up. And each slip probably has more than one plant on it. So show us one slip and how many plants that one slip. So that one has two on it. That came off the same little slip. That one's got two. Yeah, see all them big old roots? Now we're going to clip just the end of those roots off. And they say to do that because that is what had contact with the potato and that could possibly have disease on it. Look at there, boy, that one had a... No, it's just got one. Okay. And the thing is, that potato that's in the ground that he's getting these slips on, all underneath is got a bunch of um, roots. So that potato is already established in the ground, and so it's just going to keep on growing um, slips. See how you can pull them apart and have more than one? But if he let the big potato come up out of the ground, then the roots would not be attached anymore. And uh, it would grow back, but it'd take it a while if you took it out and put it back. But those roots are established under there, so that's what we want to keep. And this is the first row. We're going to get the first row out, and it's going to go in the first row of the garden. And that's how we'll know what kind it is. Well, we've got our um, 
sweet potato slips, our first row of sweet potato slips, we only do one row at a time so we don't get them mixed up and we don't want the slips to suffer. They're out there with Joey in a bucket and we're going to start at the end back there and come this way. Uh, this is our sweet potato patch. It's about 75 foot long. Uh, we share a lot of sweet potatoes and we eat a lot of sweet potatoes. It's one of our main staples and that's why we grow this many but you can grow a sweet potato in a bucket so uh, if you if you know a friendly farmer like me that'll share their sweet potatoes slips with you uh, or you can get them at any feed and seed store or you can grow them yourself but this is the perfect time of year to be putting sweet potatoes in the ground so we're going to get started we're going to we got the water hose i got a little leak here got the water hose stretched out and we are going to plant them in holes of mud so uh, they'll be really happy today even though it's going to be about 90 degrees okay we got this thing started now we got uh, the sweet potatoes are about a foot apart um, Joey has dug a hole in nice soft soil so what I'm, I've got the water hose here I'm going to fill the hole individually with water and then we're just going to uh, um, cover up the sweet potatoes almost had enough to get this row done well, let's see if I can let y'all see this one without getting the camera wet so we just make it a pond in there covered up if you see we clipped off the ends a little bit that was against the potato and well let me pull off a few more leaves because okay now you got a good picture clipped off the end that was against the potato clipped off the lower leaves and all this probably even this leaf is going to go underground in the mud puddle. Well, folks, here they all are. We only got one row that went all the way out to the end. The other ones, I separated some and got them in water rooting so we can bring them on out. Next weekend, they'll be ready to put in the ground. And that last row just had so few, the Carolina rubies. Uh, so the bigger plants I just cut in half and we got them rooting. And uh, you'll notice this is something don't want for somebody that hasn't planted them before. Is that even though they are sitting in a mud puddle, they are all droopy. But underneath the ground is what matters. I knew it was going to be 90 degrees today, and this was just the only day we had to plant. And uh, But these roots are sitting down in, in the uh, mud. So this evening, when the sun goes down or clouds come over, uh, this these plants will perk right back up. You might lose a few leaves, but what's important is what's going on underneath the ground. So the roots are nice and healthy. They're sitting in mud. Uh, they're probably even happier than they were on the plant. So in a few days, they'll be perked right up, and I'll give you some pictures of that. So now we're going to, we got a few more, our last tomatoes to transplant. So we'll take you with us on that. <music> 